Zig Jackson. I'm a man named Hidatsa Rikara. And I come from um, the Fort Berkeley Indian Reservation up in North Dakota. Uh, this is uh, way up there in uh, uh, sort of like oh, 60 miles, maybe, maybe, maybe not, not that much, maybe 100 miles from Canada and about 60 miles from Montana. Um, we lived along the Missouri River of North Dakota and um, it's 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 uh, we're we're Plains Indians and and uh, and um, the state tree for uh, North Dakota is a telephone pole. <laughs> and, uh, that's, that's I remember as a child growing up um, um, asking my father, an Indian, uh, where's where's all these telephone poles come from? And he said uh, they come from trees, and, and I couldn't. Have, Imagine what a tree being as straight, and um, can you imagine telling a little um, child that? Um, it wasn't until years later, uh, when I was on my way to Alaska um, uh, to photograph, I saw uh, coming out of BC, I saw all the trees, and I was uh, uh, outside the boat. And I said to myself, My God, Dad, I finally know where all the telephone poles come from. <laughs> Uh, then again, they would say you can get on a mountain and look, oh, uh, five, you know, uh, you know, 150 miles. It wasn't, you know, you couldn't think about that when growing up there until years later when I went to New Mexico and um, got up there on Sandia Peak and, and I could see the uh, Mount Taylor region. It was unbelievable growing up in Dakotas. Well, I, I put these slides together, uh, kind of going from my earlier works to where, where I'm at now. Uh, this is a photograph of my mother, and my two brothers. I just set the camera up and uh, photographed. I said, uh, I'd like to take a photograph of you. And uh, she dug in uh, the trunks and got out her blankets. Um, she's holding a Hudson Bay. Uh, she gives my brother another star quilt. She pulls out her war bonnets and uh, makes us wear them. <laughs> and uh, it's really ironic that when you read up on a Mandan, <laughs> Um, back in the 1830s, we got wiped out by smallpox. They, they gave us blankets contaminated with smallpox. So, uh, my earlier works, I would go ahead and put these images together uh, before the computer and, and go ahead and play with them. Uh, we lived in earth lodges. You can see on top of the, um, the old photograph. I, I wanted to show a little bit of transition from old to new. Uh, some of these images there, uh, they, they, they came from the attic. Uh, they, they were cleaning out the attic, and I found um, they had these old images. Well, given to Zig, he, you know, they'd give me all these old photographs. So. Um, some of my earlier stuff, playing with the, uh, what they call the Van Dyke process, which I learned at the University of New Mexico. Um, I, uh, before I was a photographer, I was a potter. And before I was a potter, I was a painter. And I uh, would uh, make these masks out of uh, Raku, uh, sometimes high fire them, and uh, go ahead and uh, paint the emotion on. Um, this is a 16 by 20 image. I'm probably the only uh, Native American who ever took his 4 by 5 up on a vision quest with a long cable release, <laughs> and I'd be up there on the hill. And, and I, super, I, I just put an eagle feather in there and photographed it. Uh, and then put the glass on top of it and exposed it. So. Oh, another earlier piece. I was trying to show the sacredness of the ruins at the time when I was living in New Mexico and how sacred they were. And when I show my students, um, uh, when I talk to them about photography, I talk to, to them about the sacredness of things and how powerful the camera is. And when you go out to your, um, you know, to photograph something, I uh, uh, lay something down and talk about it. Uh, each day when I go out, every summer I, I load the uh, car up or the van and go out and photograph. And uh, um, it's it's always it's always a sacred thing for me. Where when I when I get out into these areas, I'll go ahead and, and um, lay some tobacco down. I'm going to shoot today, uh, make it good. And if I don't feel right, I won't shoot. And when I come into these ruins, you, if you're eating a piece of sandwich, lay some food down and tell them, you know, I'm coming in your area. I said, we go into your cathedrals and the churches and we touch your, your holy water. Here, you know, it's that same concept. Uh, oh my God, it's a new Native American woman. <laughs> uh, being young, <clears throat> being young, 
And growing up in um, North Dakota, uh, we had this uh, story. Uh, it was not a myth. It was a real thing. It was a Mahabawiya. And uh, Mahabawiya meaning holy women. And uh, Mahabawiya's go. And I, my mom and my uncles would always say, you boys, you kids behave. Otherwise, Mahabawiya's going to get you. And uh, we'd all quiet down, and, and uh, so my dad or uncle would knock on the, you know, the the wall, and Mahabawiya hoots. You know, she's coming to get you. And uh, years later, I went ahead and did a Mahabawiya series. She's so powerful, she can transform herself into um, any type of animal. And, you know, I used to hear a lot of the um, old Indians saying, you know, they see your way out there, and they'd see these ravens, and crows always hackling and talking, and uh, that was the uh, Mahabha Wea. And she can sing. She's very beautiful, and she sings, and she'll take yourself. And my dad used to say that, um, you know, when you see a, a drunk Indian on the streets, and um, he's down on his luck, and, and he's there, it's Mahabha Wea has him. It's okay, though. He's going to be all right. He's going to come back. And, you know, growing up with those stories, I was... They kind of had that, that fixation on them. Uh, this could be a fixation too for so many tribal people. Um, just looking at this makes me hungry. Um, uh, earlier works, uh, when I first attended the University of New Mexico, um, I, I took an old Albert Bierstedt painting and I cut it out. And my brother and uh, his, uh, my niece and nephew, He's in the Fox Society. He revived an old, old society that the Mandans had lost, and uh, they're very strong today. They up the old, who was, uh, what families were in there. And every time I would go home, uh, my aunt, uh, Rose Kropas, I would say to me, you better, give, you better get some food. I know you, you're way over there, and um, you, you know, here's some chopped meat and some pork and some luncheon meat. And, uh, you know, I was so proud. I said, oh, Auntie, I don't, I don't really need that food, but, I, you know, heck yeah. You know, once I got back to New Mexico, I really didn't have anything to eat. So I would, you know, eat the uh, commodities. And you can tell that's chicken. And that's pork. So well, we got lunch of meat out there right now, don't we, when we snack? So. Um, <clears throat> here we go. We've got a different assortment of them, a little bit different assortment. And these were the Red Legging Society. I, I had taken that photograph in, um, in Oklahoma City. Uh, my, dad's Indian, my dad's Indian name was Two Chiefs, and um, he used to be able to cook luncheon meat like 10 different ways. <laughs> uh, he'd put in um, potatoes sometimes, macaroni, onions, and fry it up. And my God, my son's rolling. <laughs> and uh, you know, Sony Mithrilby. I wonder if any Indian women knew what these ingredients were. You know, and who read those ingredients? You know, you had all, it, they were full of salt. There were foods stored in the um, Midwest, and um, in case of attack, in uh, uh, silos, missile silos. Well, what are you going to do with that food? Well, let's go ahead and give it to the Indians, and uh, that's where we got our food. Our um, commodity day was on the first Thursday of every month. And my father would say, get Ziggy up, and let's go get our commodities. <laughs> so, and I think, you know, when I reevaluate that, uh, he, used to, he was very proud of me, and I would carry those, like, 100-pound sacks of flour on my back out to the farm. So. <laughs> Uh, earlier works of uh, Van Dyke, just taking imagery and putting them together and uh, playing with a more of an artistic film. Uh, a great uh, photographer at the University of New Mexico, Betty Hahn, showed me the um, Van Dyke process. And, and uh, just taking imagery, some found images of some Catmans and Bobners, and, and uh, some of my images, and cutting them out and, and painting on the emotion on watercolor paper, and um, contact printing it. and. Then taking the, uh, you know, the um, the brush and going ahead and painting and adding text to it, and um, and making it work. Uh, we talked a lot about the boarding school system. Um, 
I, yeah, we all we, we all went to boarding school. I, I went to boarding school when I was nine years old. My uh, the older brother went when he was uh, seven. They took him and they shipped us out to South Dakota. It was Saint, it was Saint Joe's Indian School, and uh, the motto for that school was "Home of Poor Little Indian Boys and Girls." And um, this image here. I found it in the attic, and um, I took all the old images that we would bring home. That's Brother Paul. There's Brother Paul again. That's Brother Bonaventure, who taught us all how to draw and paint. And here's my brother Duke, and my brother Royce. This is my grandfather Jackson. Uh, his uh, his name was Dancing Bull, and on my on, our, on my birth certificate, my name is Gardner Zygmunt Dancing Bull and his was uh, Dancing Bull. And that's his cousin uh, Birdbeaks, but his name is now Stevenson. And when the government, uh, there was a time when the government said, okay, you guys can't have names like that, so they gave him the name Stevenson, and they gave him the name Jackson. So that's where we get the name Jackson. Uh, my older brothers uh, went ahead and changed their name back, but I just went ahead to stay with Jackson. Uh, earlier works, uh, there was a time when I was much younger and uh, wanting to sell photographs, and it seemed like everybody uh, wanted to buy images of toned Native American Indians. Uh, well, you know, do you have any toned Indians? Uh, so I, I, I kind of went ahead and I, I selectively toned all my Indian images because I was mad. And um, I said, you want to see toned Indians? I'll give you toned Indians. And uh, this is my niece. What I would do is use a photo maskoid and paint all that photo maskoid around that image with a brush, and then this would be all blank, and I was I would put it in toner, and um, and then go ahead and submerge it in toner. Uh, Crow Fair again, a toned image, you know, selectively toned. Uh, again, putting the photo maskoid on, and then going ahead and playing with that. Dances. A Mandan dancer on that. Uh, earlier works, uh, when I show this work to my students, I talk about, um, you know, know, your, know what you're doing, uh, what, what kind of dancer is this, um, and uh, where does he come from? Uh, this is a plains, a grass dancer from the north, uh, that's uh, 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 a fellow from North Dakota. Here's a sacking fox from Oklahoma. Um, here's here's an Apache guy from uh, Miscalero, and some of the some of the dances, uh, uh, the beat work, and and you know some of the things that they wear. I'm just getting to. I was use that image. Uh, traveling, uh, I would I would go to these different reservations and photograph. This is up in Reno Sparks Colony, and. Uh, they were having a little powwow, and I sat there and waited, and uh, just kept taking pictures with the Hilton in the back. And, and the, they always used this notorious thing here um, called the last, the beaten, the beaten Indian on the flag. And, and when you look at the, the Native American culture and how, how sometimes we're really beaten down, it, it seems like it's always the women that are bringing us through. Um, I've always liked that image. And uh, I, I kind of like uh, the, seri uh, the seriousness of it, I guess. Um, photographing um, a series of uh, work that I did was called my degradation series. <laughs> and photographing stands and, and what they do sell. And I tell everybody I'm built like that. <laughs> <laughs> and when I pray, I do go out there and pray. I'm still looking for her. <laughs> so. uh, it seems like all white people think that, you know, we have this, well, I imagine we, most of us do, but uh, everybody does, but we have this, um, this knowledge into the spiritual, and, uh, and uh, we, can, we can talk about uh, nature and things, and we always have, like, uh, words of, uh, uh, nicknames of uh, animals. So they make us into caricatures now. I tell everybody this is how I make out. 
<laughs> so, my Indian name is the Coyote. No, it isn't really. But, but you know, it's just things like that. Uh, we put on T-shirts, and uh, our culture is now on T-shirts. And we still hunt buffalo like that. Actually, I'm still looking for her. <laughs> so. Uh, nowadays, everybody, you know, could be a Native American. Uh, things are sold. Uh, now you can go to stands and buy sweet grass, sage, uh, different types of um, herbs, uh, bones, um, um, hat racks. You can buy drums, you know, rugs. You can dress up and be a Native American. You can sell, you know, like uh, hatchets and pipes and, and things like that. And, and you can see uh, that in my later works on, on uh, being New Agers. Um, a series that I'm working on uh, that's going to be shown at the University of New Mexico this uh, January is all my signs, uh, photographing signs. Uh, I think someone mentioned it the other talk, uh, traveling and, and uh, photographing all the uh, Indian signs. Here we have a teepee out in the southwest. It, it doesn't matter. No one cares. No. Well, we didn't use teepees, but as long as they stop and we can sell something, I'll feel good about it. Uh, Indian drums, beaded belts, um, kind of a dark slide, but all the signs through there in Arizona. Here's here's one talk about confusion to Native American. <laughs> when I took this when I took this image, I, I took this image up in South Dakota, uh, going into North Dakota, and there was about four cars of Indians. Uh, you know, park there, scratching their head. You know, me, they confuse us more. So, I took this one in Monument Valley, uh, in one of my earlier works, probably done in the early 90s. Uh, when I took it, there was a guy working on the uh, fry bread stand, and I was talking to him, and he said he was remodeling, and uh, it's just something that they had to do to adjust. And you look at Monument Valley, and you look at the strong metaphor, the fence, and every western that John Wayne did was out there. So, another road sign showing that little correlation there. On, I think this is in, uh, here in Arizona on I-40. Uh, I love this area. This is up at Nola, Highway 44, going up into a uh, Farmington area off the uh, Hickory Apache, and I used to love to, well I still do when I'm out there, uh, drive out there and stop and take a nap and eat my lunch and, and think about things. <laughs> I started a series earlier in my work called Indian Photographing, Tourist Photographing Sacred Sites. And this, is, <laughs> this is down in um, Monument Valley and I would uh, just uh, put up the camera and watch all these people and uh, photograph them photographing sacred sites. Um, it's a sacred area and um, you get you get tourists down here yelling across and, and the acoustics and, and are, is really incredible because if you say something over here you can hear it over here. And uh, there was a little kid down in that area and he was going, Mom, Dad, come on down here. Uh, this is where they throw the dead Indians off. You know, there was a little uh, the, the park guy was saying, well, the, you know, all the garbage, and we found bodies in the, this area. So, a little respect, uh, more tourism, Indian photographing tourists, photographing sacred sites. Um, I pulled up here, and I had my Hasselblad with me, and I was in a VW bus, and I get out, and these are all Germans, and they all look at me, and they all chuckle. You know, they come to see uh, our tribal lands, and, and here's an Indian getting out of a VW with a household blood. <laughs> I've, always, I've always liked this, but I don't know why this never made anything. Uh, I come one of my earlier ones uh, up in Yellowstone, and how we're, we're geared to go ahead and, 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 and be in that type of structure of, of photographing. Everybody was parked over here in this area, and they all ran around here, and they all stand in line to photograph the elk. So here is Zig photographing them. Uh, this is up in um, 
Uh, where's this at? Yeah, this is in South Dakota. And this is Crazy Horse Monument. And, and uh, you know, Borglum, the, the fellow who created um, um, uh, Mount Rushmore did the same in Georgia. He did, um, you know, the uh, the wall on the um, the Georgia monument. I can't remember. Uh, Stone but, Mountain. Yeah, Stone Mountain. And then he comes up and they got all these, uh, um, Mount Rushmore, he got all these presidents on. Oh my God, we got, we got to do something about that. You know, we took these sacred black hills away from the Indians. And the least we could do is put them up a monument. So they're going to build a crazy horse who's, Never had his photograph taken. I don't know. Maybe you guys will find it somewhere in Smithsonian. <laughs> but uh, but here it is. Here and they're going to build him over here, so you can see his head, his arm, and the and the head of the horse. So um, the flea market man. Uh, years ago, when I was young, we were getting ready to go to school, and my dad says to us, he says, well, "It's time your boy saw the sacred skulls." And my Indian name is Gita Bukhidehish, and it's buffalo getting up, rising buffalo. And uh, he took us, he, my mom cooked all day, and um, we put all the food in, the, in the, um, the trunk, and we went. And we drove way out in the country, out of nowhere, and um, finally came to about three log cabins. And it was this old Indian medicine man out there, and um, we parked. My dad got up and talked, and he said, you boys unload. And just about then, the cars started pulling up. And, um, and uh, we went into this uh, one um, log cabin, and he pulled open this huge robe. And there was these huge buffalo skulls, of, uh, I want to say two, maybe three. And they were maybe two, three hundred years old. And uh, he sang and prayed and blessed us. And, uh, you know, I came around the, uh, the flea market, and uh, you see this notorious end of the end of the beaten warrior. Then you see the strong metaphor for the fence, and then you see Gidapa, uh -huh. and then you see him yelling, and, and he's saying that'll be five dollars for that photograph, buddy. So, um, this is up in Cherokee, North Carolina. Um, you know, it's uh, just just a way of uh, selling and, and getting your images out there. I mean, uh, getting your stuff out there and promoting. So, and uh, if you've ever been to Cherokee, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, take a picture with the Indian. Uh, this guy was this guy was standing out there in the streets of Cherokee, North Carolina, and uh, I just stopped and went up to him and, and uh, talked to him. And I said, you don't mind if I hang out with you? And he, he didn't talk much. He didn't want to talk. He just, he just shrugged his shoulders. So I stuck around, and um, every time someone would come along and take a picture of him, he'd go over by, oh, he'd walk over here and, and stand by himself and then kind of look up into the mountains. And then people would come by and take pictures with him. And there was this couple and, and this um, two kids. And this lady goes, oh my god, look, it's an Indian chief. And she was just like, oh, how cute. Come on, you take a picture with the Indian. And the other kid got so scared, started yelling and screaming, and hid behind his mom. And the other kid jumped on the Indian's lap and said, come on, you can take a picture with the Indian. Come on. You know, and about that time I had my head down and I had this huge lump. And uh, uh, is this one? This one um, is in San Francisco. This is the uh, the uh, beaten savage. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing um, about this image here. This is the, um, the uh, San Francisco Public Library. And uh, the street people, the Indian um, street people, they would uh, all come, um, get together and sit below the statue. And uh, the cops would come and uh, say, OK, it was time to move. And the Indians, uh, the street Indians would be there drinking. And when the cops would say, come on, it's time to move, uh, the cop would look up at the statue and say, oh, oh, well. 
come on, I'll give you more, you know, 15 more minutes. And kind of leave, let them sit there and drink. So. Uh, this one's Praise Those Savages. Uh, this is done in Salt Lake City. And, um, you know, you talk, you talk about religions and things uh, coming to reservations and, and um, beaten down cultures. And you look at the Utes and what the Mormon church had to do. <coughs> and, um, you know, they came on into this beautiful area and moved the youths out and put them out there and said, let's come on, let's, let's put them out here on, on, on the desert and let's leave them. And so you had the Ute Mountain Utes and the Southern Utes. And, and uh, they said, oh my God, we've got to commemorate them somehow. What, do, <coughs> what can we do? We treated them so rough. And they said, well, let's, 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 let's put up a statue. And um, so they put up the statue. And it's a, a guy out of Massachusetts who did, a, who did a statue of Chief Massasoit. And put it out there. And he said, oh my god, this is not a Ute Indian. And they said, well, who cares? And they let her know, the Indian's an Indian. So there's Chief Massasoit. Yo, I all told you about two moons. Two moons smiling. There's two moons stoic. Okay. Set back. Um, okay, everybody be stoic. Don't smile. Okay, everybody smile. So, and that's my mother and her aunt and, and uh, Joyce, who is uh, my cousin. And uh, she was the first outspoken lesbian of our tribe. And she always dressed up as a... Uh, in our in our dances as a um, a grass dancer and she would win and uh, she was a great dancer well of course the men wouldn't say anything because they lost and uh, I took this image and uh, six months later she passed she doesn't have a, a breast or breast gone and look how thin her arms are so she died of uh, cancer uh, a little bit of diptychs uh, this is sacred this is sacred to the Native Americans. This is a cabizon. And this is sacred to people. Look, the uh, uh, photographs, uh, uh, diptychs. Uh, before, this is a Sundance Lodge. And after, uh, a naked zig. This, is, uh, this culture doesn't have anything to pray with. And uh, this is how they pray. And this culture uses this to pray with. And this is uh, in New Mexico at the VLA. Uh, the the, uh, the um, a series of Indian photographing, uh, tourists photographing sacred sites turned into a series called Indian photographing, tourists photographing Indian. And I would, I would go around photographing tourists photographing Indian. Uh, Crow Fair. It, 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 it's like, um, um, did you do it in spite? Zig? No, I, no, I didn't. I, it was something that uh, it was just happening. It was like, it was just um, getting out there and photographing. It was, uh, it was um, just bringing it, bringing it out, I guess. I was telling my students, you, you don't uh, just because you get uh, just because you have a camera doesn't give you the right to shove it in anybody's face. Um, and I talk a lot about the ASMP photographers and, and the, you know the people uh, National Geographic years ago would go in the cultures and and uh, not even study a culture or or know what the culture was doing. And nowadays, if you if you ever, ever in these organizations, they teach you. Okay, we're going to send you out and into this culture, and they, you get to study a little bit about that culture before you go. Uh, this um, this guy here uh, was putting on a show in Santa Fe at one time, how to photograph the Native American Indian, and evidently he's from uh, Flagstaff, and he lives up in Flagstaff and photo. Uh, the Tomahara Indians did a calendar on them. I later found that out from, from someone. Uh, these guys, you know, when you Indian dance, it gets pretty hot. You need a little drink of something cold. 
or something to eat. So this is hot dogs, corn dogs, and cold drinks. So they're kind of taking a break. Uh, you know, as traveling, I, I, I go to all these Indian reservations and photograph and, uh, you know, find it, and find out about people. I, I was a graduate of Intermountain Indian School up in Utah, and I went to school with a lot, maybe a, a, someone in your tribe I moved down here, and the Pimas and the Pavagos and the, the Diné people, and, and uh, measured the reservation, and they were a mile off. So this going over here, the pavement ends, and over here is the Crow Reservation, and the pavement ends. The Crows said, well, we're not going to pave it. You know, <laughs> Cheyenne said, well, we're not going to pave it. So, and this fight was going on forever. And uh, I mean, last time I went through, it was paved. So, this is the Ute Mountain Indian Reservation. Um, I had a sign, no longer there, but... Um, I can't wait to have a show on these guys and, and put them together. Entering Crow Indian Reservation, what kind of someone asked me what kind of cameras you should, you should mention that, Zig. Um, I'll take anything I can with me sometimes uh, on a bulletin board at school. I'll find uh, film for sale and I'll take color film. I'll go ahead and buy it. I'll even take my plastic hogo with me and load that up and I'll have my Hasselblad. And this one, this one was done with a hoga, you know, your $14 plastic camera. Uh, it's Letta. I used to drive on south of Albuquerque when I was living in Albuquerque and uh, buy my bread down in this Letta. Sorry, Lee, we didn't go all the way out to Laguna. <laughs> and here's Laguna. I uh, rented a house in Laguna, actually. It was on I-40 um, when I first moved to New Mexico. It was way out in the desert, way out there. Uh, I did my master's at the uh, San Francisco and I uh, went out there and uh, it, it was it was a tough time you gotta you gotta know moving from you know um, uh, a rural area like uh, New Mexico out to uh, you know a big urban area like uh, San Francisco and I did a series in, in uh, San Francisco called uh, Indian Man in San Francisco. And um, it was, I was looking for Indians, and uh, I was I was always thinking about the relocation program in the 50s and 60s when the government would take Native Americans off the reservation, kind of like a, a conquer and uh, a divide and conquer technique, uh, bring them in, let's break them from their from their uh, ceremonies, their their culture, let's put them into mainstream America and teach them a trade. So this is kind of like a little homage to that. And there I am in front of the painted ladies. Okay, come on now, find me, and then <laughs> uh, here, I am, right here I am in a mission, uh, walking in, in between the Laternos, the little gangs. They're going, let's not, let's not get any mad. <laughs> uh, here I am. Before my mother passed, uh, I, I showed her these images, and. Um, she was, she was saying it in, and she goes, Hitty, Hitty Daba. And she'd say, well, What is this? And I said, That's all his stuff, Mom. Everything he owns is right there. And, you know, it was really, it was really kind of cute to see that little Indian lady looking at it. And she couldn't understand why someone would live in a, in a, in a cart. And uh, she kept this on her, on her wall, and she would always tell people who would come to visit that this is where this man lived, and this is where he had all his stuff. He just slept in the street. Oh, uh, there it is. <laughs> uh, you know, in San Francisco, you can't you can't uh, rent a place on your own. You know, you got to have roommates, and we rented a huge flat. And, and um, at that time in the early '90s, there was all these movies were coming out, and Geronimo, and Dances with Wolves. I wish I had a buck for every time someone said, "Hey, have you seen Dances with Wolves?" <laughs> then Legends of the Fall. Geronimo, Squanto. Then one of my roommates came back and said, oh my God, there's like another movie came out. I'm sorry. I said, what is it? And she, he says, Indian in a cupboard. So, <laughs> that, that same year, I think the Indians were playing the Braves. So, 
and you couldn't even get out of the apartment and you, you'd be bombarded with that. And there's uh, an event on the bus. So someone asked me, the, what, um, do, do you pay these people not to look at you? <laughs> You know, no, you know, you're in there, and there's so many movies uh, done in San Francisco, and um, people just kind of, you know, take you for granted. Naked <laughs> uh, man on the beach, and it's and it's just not 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 any you know Indian man. It's it's every urban Indian. Um, I got a call from NPR up in um, Seattle, and. Uh, we talked about uh, the Indian man and uh, the urban Indian. And I said, when, when, when the Indians move away from the reservations and they go off to college or you know, move to the city, they, they, become, more, uh, they, 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 they become more sacred, they, they pray more. And a lot of you urban Indians in, in the crowd today know that. You know, you're walking off can you know, by yourself in canvas and you're praying. And, and this could be any, any urban Indian you know, leaving his country, leaving the reservation. Um, the all the signs and everything, you know, getting um, to a point. Uh, why do I have to go on reservations and photograph uh, Indians, uh, tribal people? Why can't you be your own Indian, Zig? Why can't you make your own sign up? Why can't Why can't they photograph you? So I made my own sign up. And I would occupy different areas of the city, private property, no picture taken, no hunting, traffic, uh, air traffic prohibited, and new agers prohibited. I don't want, I don't want no new agers on my reservation. Uh, you, everywhere I go, I'll see a new ager, and. And living in Georgia, I can see one coming from across the street. <laughs> and I gotta go this other way. And, and when I research that and think about it, you know, when was the first New Asia you saw? And I remember years ago being a child, this lady came and lived with us uh, on a reservation, and she took the name Lion Woman. <laughs> and she would dance in our dances, and she was just, she was so good. And she, you know, and everybody respected her, and even going back. Uh, into time, so uh, I had this in a show in San Francisco, and um, some lady I was over here, you know, standing, I was walking, listening to people and look at your, see who notices your work, and I heard some lady going, "My God, what Indian reservation is that? <laughs> is that the capital? Is that what you have? I said, "Yeah, I'm doing a little, I'm doing a little renovating." I can't, I gotta, I gotta do something about these street people. I just keep lying on the lawn. So the cops come and say, "Well, you gotta move that sign." In San Francisco, the cops are, are pretty pretty okay. And the cop goes, "Well, hey, great idea, man, but you gotta move." So I move to the new ballpark and uh, occupy that. And this is where all the street people live, where the new ballpark's going to be built. And I occupy that until I'm told to move. I get thrown in jail. Next, and then I got the Golden Gate on my reservation. I'm really pondering what to do with all these tourists that come on my reservation. I'm thinking about charging them. Here I am in Golden Gate Park, and I got Buffalo on my reservation. <laughs> And um, these were William William Randolph Hearst Buffalo, and um, you know he do, you know donated them to the Park Service. So there they are. I remember my first week in San Francisco. I, I didn't live but a block away from Golden Gate, and I went for a run, and in the park. Yeah, that's right. I used to run, <laughs> and um, it was getting dark, and I was. I was running right on the sidewalk here, and I could smell. I said, "My God, that, that smells like Gita Patel. That smells like my buffalo poop." And I smelled them, and I could hear them in the dark, and they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Here I am in Georgia, and I'm on the Savannah River and looking at factories. 
So this is kind of an ongoing little thing here where I take my sign to different areas and <laughs> occupy. So. My last series uh, uh, I did, uh, um, I got a little grant from uh, the College of Santa Fe James Enhart's book on photographers, writers, and the American scene. And I did a thing on the veterans, the American Indian veteran. And, uh, you know, I used to, you know, when I was younger, I envied them because when they came back, you know, from war, songs were sung about them. Um, you know, and I used to think to myself as a child, I said, when are they ever going to, you know, have a song for me to dance? This is in Crow. Uh, this guy just got back from Desert Storm. This is Tom Yellowtail. And uh, he um, he's the medicine man. So these, this, these are uh, Sue's. These are up in, um, you know, these are up in uh, the Little Bighorn. National Monument. These are Ricaras. These are rat, the, the family of rabbit heads. They use a POW. And this is old old man John Rabbithead. These guys are all dead now. So then you come back and the song's made for you and you're honored. Uh, this guy's on leave and this guy is also and you got your veterans like a Vietnam veteran, you know, the Korean conflict, you know, Vietnam and, and um, you're honored. Uh, when a dance happens for you, you know, the, the, um, the, um, you, uh, the war mothers get up and they'll dance with you. She either lost a son in the uh, service or she lost her husband or, you know, or, you know, they'll get up and dance with you. Then all the veterans behind you dance. And uh, nothing, nothing happens everywhere you go. I mean, in every tribe, we're the only culture that uh, honor their their um, veterans with song and songs are made for you a uh, flag song uh, the feed the veterans you know it was funny before this last war I was thinking wow what a, what another thing going down if there's another war it's going to be so you know it's all you know the another thing's going to be lost and then uh, here the, the flag songs being sung. So that's it. <laughs>